terrible. No, I didn't touch it. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi. <laughs> hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Abigail Hardingham. I am an actor in Bufflehead and also one of the three executive producers. I'm Steve Brett, director, um, also executive producer. Uh, and I'm Pete Moore and I wrote Bufflehead. Bufflehead. Yeah. I'm say the title of my So, writer. Name. Bufflehead. Yeah. Bufflehead. Um, Bufflehead. So, what was the inspiration? As, as the writer, what was the inspiration behind? Um, well, it was, a, it was an idea that was pretty fully formed in terms of a, it was a sort of little sketch, comedy sketch almost, in a doctor's office, which just had the little build up of this confusion and then the punchline that she knew the answer. Mm -hmm. um, but <coughs> Sorry. It didn't feel very funny. <laughs> so in terms of, <laughs> it, in terms of a sketch, it didn't really work. And then I got the idea of why would the doctor be asking these weird questions? Mm. And then I sort of told Steve. Didn't you have? A, didn't you have like a, a dream that helped you kind of like oh, continue? I didn't to... think we were going to mention. Yeah, no, I didn't think we were going to mention that. It was, it was a fully, okay, I think that's a more interesting... No, but it helped you re, like, yeah, the initial, you already had the... Yeah, the idea came from my dream, but I then oh wrote it God. down. Under the, under the, under the tracks. <laughs> I wrote it down as a little sketch, but then yeah. we obviously expanded that. Yeah, so the sketch, the sketch was the dream. My dream didn't that's have you in the centre. <laughs> no, I know that. Playing it perfectly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it was a dream. I, I woke up with this mad idea in my head that the doctor who was it in the dream who was it yeah we should have somebody else obviously michael kenner was <laughs> oh my god <laughs> no uh yeah it was it was a dream initially but then yeah yeah expanded on it that, yeah. So, yeah um what inspired me from your script was um uh having had my own issues with mental health i knew how difficult it was sometimes you feel like you're uh, jumping through rings of fire just to get your voice heard. So I really yeah. liked that you took like the comedy element of you put a comedy element on something that like I personally yeah. understood. Not that I had well, to quite do the same thing, but yeah, the the stress that's added to the patient who has already obviously got a situation with anxiety or whatever that meant something to me as well. Mm. Something that I identified with. Um. But yeah, so we all kind of have that in yeah. common in terms of trying to tell that particular story. Yeah, to make yeah. something funny, but also something personal. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Why did you want to? Well, I was going to say, is it really sarcastic about being an asshole now after you two talked about mental health? <laughs> well, what inspired you from the script? Uh, the way Pete looked at me with his sad eyes as he pushed it across the table at me <laughs> and said, what do you think? <laughs> Um, yeah, I echo all of that, um, but also, um, I was really interested in just a really, in something that could have quite easily been a really short play, like the shortest play in the world, mm -hmm. but essentially just a two-hander in one room. I'm quite interested in small amount of cast members in small amount of locations Yeah. Um, in general, so yeah, I think that was quite interesting. And then just the... How ridiculous it was. Yeah. <laughs> quite, quite, like, quite like the challenge of trying to make something so ridiculous so normal. Yeah. Um, which you and Rashenda did. Yeah. Yes, Rashenda Sandal, who is the amazing actor who plays patient, um, <clears throat> who's here in spirit. Um, <laughs> um, She's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um so yes what was like uh one of the like more fun aspects of shooting it for you or like what was like a cool aspect of like seeing it from page to being on uh, well the i mean one of the the big difference from what i initially saw in my head was our location that we got and the obviously seeing you guys saying the lines was amazing and yeah, the location we got did add something massive because obviously my initial thought was just, you know, a little pokey NHS style 
doctor's office, mm. Mm. you know, swivel chairs and all that. And then we got this incredible... Yeah, the place. location was really like uh, a game changer massively. Yeah. And we should mention <clears throat> Sherry Darwin, our producer, who was amazing at helping also us. Also in spirit. Uh, yes. Um, also still alive. Yes. Um, who um, helped us wrangle getting... She, she basically handled the budget so incredibly well to, because we had to... Uh, we didn't really anticipate how much the COVID insurance was going to cost and... Uh, yeah. And also that on, on top of ensuring all the cast and the crew as well, um, that we managed to wrangle the price of the, the location down to something that they weren't quite used to <laughs> asking people for. Um, but yeah, that was, yeah, the location was really awesome. East Winter Garden. East Winter Garden Canary in Wharf. Canary Wharf, yes. Oh, I'm just going to quickly check the camera because I've just got this really sink and feel of that. That you've not recorded no, any of it. Quick, go. Oh, is wow. it? Please tell me it is. Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay, sit down. Six minutes. Oh my God, thank God. Okay, right. Um, yeah, four minutes left. Okay. Um, uh, what, <clears throat> what was I cool about you, when you got in seven? Uh, no, I, I, actually to echo what Pete was saying about the location. Um, yeah, I think that was probably my biggest internal struggle was what did I want it to look like? Did I, I had, Which route did I want to go down? Did I want to go down real normality, you know, like Pete said, you know, crappy NHS um, uh, office, doctor's office, you know, with moths trapped in the light frames of the ceiling and, you know, posters for trying to quit smoking. Or right from the offset that I wanted to feel weird. And I think I think I was probably led by just the locations that we did see, mm. um, especially given that they were probably quite limited, given that we were in the middle of a pandemic. It, it just about to go into full lockdown, which mm. we just snuck in by. Um, yeah. So I think you know it was it was hard not to fall in love with East Winter Gardens yeah. when we saw it, and and then our designer Ed Ed Turner, um, he started to find out really interesting things that I, I hadn't really spotted about the floor being you know the sort of the really ancient symbol for water, that kind of zigzag and the colours, you know, sort of connecting to different types of ducks and you know and and so we just couldn't really ignore it and actually we should say the zigzag pattern we got my my sister who did the artistic design for the tarot slash ink block cards of the duck she uh created them drew them illustrated a completely original design she carried the pattern of the uh floor onto the back of the cards which you you don't really get to see you get a small glimpse yeah um which is surprisingly considering the table is made of solid glass and the table we had the table Handmade, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and they had the little the location, place. the location of the table, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really important. The, 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 loca the, location, the location was pretty much most of the budget, most of the budget, yeah. and the and table, table was pretty was much second the best. Best. yeah. Where uh, is that table now? It's, it's, it's kind of sandwiched between wall. our headboard and the wall. Oh yes, that's where it is. <laughs> so I keep, I keep every every new job I start. I'm always like, does anyone want a perspex table? Perspex clear table with tarot card groups cut into it. Yeah, do, good deal. No, yeah. Really good deal. Um, yeah. yeah, I I just loved getting uh, on set with Rashenda. I uh, Rashenda and I both share um, the same agent, um, and she's someone that I have known of and admired for a long time and we all unanimously were like if we can get Rashenda then that'll be amazing yeah. um and so thankfully having that in <laughs> with having the same agent um he was able to put it across her desk yeah. um and so yeah she is just so funny and brilliant and she just stepped off of Steve McQueen's small axe so we felt really yeah. lucky that she <laughs> so similar <laughs> similar similar uh, <laughs> production size yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. same caterers I believe um yeah she was she was uh, just awesome so for me like getting to spa with her that's such an active thing to say but getting to do do that with her was scrap yeah. was um was really really exciting and we again found so much when we were in the small space together i obviously being a producer had seen the space um and been a part of something that i had never been part of before which is those aspects of the behind the scenes in the preamble to shoot um and so it was really interesting from a producer being a producer for the first time, coming on something and then taking that hat off and just being an actor. So that was really yeah. exciting for me. That was my my favourite bit. Yeah. I think uh, for me it was, um, 
exciting and scary that uh, it was whatever decision I made was absolutely just my decision. Yeah. Uh, I'm so used to being part of a much bigger machine in my everyday job where I can hide behind the um, BBC. well, the BBC wouldn't let me do it that way, <laughs> or ITV wouldn't let me do it that way, but because. I didn't have anybody like that. The only thing I thought, oh my god, if this if this, if this is shit, that's because it's me. <laughs> well, thank God it's uh, not. Yeah. <laughs>